one thing that happened uh, um, throughout my whole divorce, it was like a nine year of pure friggin' hell. And uh, I mean, I had an ex-husband that not only didn't want to pay his child support, he was getting orders where I had to pay him. And the kids were living with me. And I'm, you know, living through pure hell. Um, the only type of employment I can find is in a factory where there was so much harassment. Um, they were building unsafe parts. Um, I could see a lot of these safety organizations that, you know, have these seals. Oh, this is safe. Well, I seen that they weren't really doing a job. There's a lot of payoffs, a lot of, you know, shutting their eyes, making things right. It was a factory that had so much harassment going on, and the factory didn't give a shit about it. They, they had no interest in making sure their employees were safe and had a safe working environment. Just had a few conversations with some business guys that thought that they knew a hell of a lot more than me and said, no, it's more every business wants to run it so that their employees are safe. Bullshit on that. If that was true, then you wouldn't be making any money. You know, you a business owner shuts their eyes. If a, if a, a, a worker actually made any complaints, you get fired for being, you know, all, all you do is complain. You know, do your work, shut your mouth, and don't say anything is the way most businesses are run. But if you actually listen to your employees, and, you, you know, if there really was uh, our corporate world, our business world actually was concerned for the well-being and health of workers, we wouldn't need unions. But uh, that's the, the reason you need a union is because um, <laughs> People with money want to make more money because you're lacking love. You don't have love for your employees and you don't want to listen to them. Same pattern with me. People don't want to listen to me. So um, when you're doing that, you're making unsafe uh, products. I go to my grocery store and hell, the products that are in there, first they don't weigh what they say they're supposed to weigh. The products that are in there, I'm not buying what's supposed to be in the product. Half of them say they're unsafe, they're going to kill you if you eat it. Um, even medicine, you know, they'll tell you up front, you know, this might cure you from one problem, but it'll cause you 20 others, you know, this may kill you, you know, it's, uh, you know they, every product has a warning. If it has a warning, that means it's not safe. <laughs> so it's like bad, bad, bad. So anyways, I'm living through freaking hell through this divorce. Clearly, I know by this time that you can't even find a good place to work at. Um, there are zero nonprofits that actually are there to help. All nonprofits that I was experiencing that say they're there to help women that are dealing with abuse are there to sustain the abuse. They're there to make sure you are being abused. They don't know that they're doing that, but that's what they're doing. I've offered to volunteer in a women's shelter under the condition that I tell women the truth because I was lied to. And they told me, well, if we tell women the truth, we'll lose our funding. So I, I'm really against most of nonprofits because they're not actually in business to end a problem. They're there to sustain problems. That, okay, we know this problem's there and there's nothing we can do, so here's a band-aid for you to cope and deal with. Life's not fair. we got to get rid of those sayings and make life fair. Um, I know that our, our so I know our economic system is totally screwed up. The fact that I had to pay child support instead of collecting child support and a judge can't tell the difference with evidence while he's making all of these unjust decisions without evidence. I I wasn't even invited to the court, which is supposed to be legal, but you try finding anybody that says that's a crime. Um, apparently, you can go to court and not even serve anybody, and it's not a crime. The only time you can in, uh, affect that is if you get a lawyer that would actually do something, and legal aid won't do any of that because most of the time they're guilty of it. Um, you have to be able to be extremely wealthy to afford a lawyer that would actually enforce that type of law. So these laws that are there are, are not, they mean nothing. And, and judges can't tell a difference between right or wrong. So I know the justice systems are wrong. The economic systems are wrong. I definitely needed medical care. That system is wrong. Physical care is wrong. Emotional care is wrong. All of these systems are completely dead wrong and not working.
working. I wouldn't trust a police to keep me safe because they don't know the difference. They're, they're being trained. I went to uh, go for a walk around the border. I was like a mile away from the border. I was just going to walk in the wilderness, you know, get my head together. And um, some guys at the border decided to come out in the wilderness. Not a uniform on. I have no clue who they are. Just scary looking guys. Um, stop me and question me and uh, find out that they're from the border and were just curious as to where I was going. It's like, why don't you wait until I'm at the border before you question me because I'm, you know, at least a mile away. There's no way I'm walking that far. If you can see me, you can see me when I get to that border. Why are you worried when I'm a mile away on foot? And um, so I ended up mentioning to this border guy that I said, you're a little paranoid, don't you think? And uh, the guy says, yeah, they train us to be paranoid. So that's what cops are trained to be paranoid schizophrenics. Um, are, if you're in business and have a lot of money, guess what? You're a psychopath. When we want to wonder where our psychopaths come from, you learned it from your school. Your school system, your books are training you to be a psychopath, and you think it's okay. Our corporate structure, if you have not noticed, it says, if you don't want to have any liability, if you don't want to be responsible or accountable for the harm you cause to human life, form a corporation so you'll never be sued or held accountable for your actions. And somehow we think a corporation is going to be good for us. No, it means that you can do whatever the hell you want to. So all of these systems are wrong. I can go to my government. They don't give a shit. There's nobody you can talk to that actually cares about it because they are the perpetrators of this game. So anyways, while I'm living through this hell experience, and I needed to find an answer because I now was told that I owe my ex a whole pile of money for child support. I can't even feed my kids on the minimum wage. I'm totally freaking out because now I assume that okay, now my minimum wage is going to be garnished and I have these kids to support going to this man that's working in the oil field. You know, and what do I do about it? I, you know, I wasn't invited to the court uh, case, but they can give me the order. <laughs> you know, I don't get the summons that, hey, you've been taken to court, but they can give me the, the court order. And I'm freaking out now. I'm, I'm like royally losing my mind. I know I have to find a lawyer. I'm talking to lawyers like you wouldn't believe. They're all saying there's nothing you can do. I get on the phone with this one lawyer, and uh, um, he's telling me there's nothing he can do, nothing he can do. Now, I'm freaking out, so I'm probably, you know, pain in his butt, not being very nice to him, I'm sure, because I was very angry. And I heard a click on the phone. There was dead air, and then I heard a click. So I assumed that he just hung up on me because he couldn't talk to me. And so I hung up the phone. Then the guy phones me back, and uh, um, prior to making these phone calls to the cops, or to these lawyers, um, that night before, I was like, God, you really got to tell me what my answer is. You know, I really don't know what it is I got to do, and God, you got to give me some answers, you know, and this was serious, serious to God. I needed to help. Big time. And it's like, when you really, really need God, he does show up if you're asking and you're ready to receive. And um, so the next day, I'm making these calls to the lawyers. And this lawyer phones me back after I had hung up on him. And he says, I don't want to leave you like this. And then he starts saying, have you ever? And uh, then he stopped. And generally, that's when God talks. It's when, you know, us, we don't want to go outside our norm. We don't want to go outside our evil actions and say what our truthful potential wants to say. But here he was a lawyer and he had something to say. And it was like, lawyers don't talk this way. So he didn't want to tell me. So I begged and begged him, no, you got to tell me what you wanted to say. I want to hear it. And uh, so he says, okay, I, I will tell you this, but this is not legal advice. If you ever say this legal advice, I'll deny I ever said it. Um, but he asked me if I ever read the book Conversations with God, which is a book that basically says God works through other people. So just the title of the book was more of this guy saying, God's going to speak to you now. <laughs> and then the next words he says is, God wants me to talk to you. <laughs> 
and he wants me to tell you that you're supposed to what you're supposed to do and you're supposed to take everything that was done and do something with it and it just like oh my god blew me away now what did it mean take everything that was done to me and do something and it's like I'm still in the middle of this I know that whatever game is being played whatever event that was going on was not over yet um, there was still a lesson to be learned and it wasn't until I learned the lesson of why all of this was going on do I know that I need to do something with it so it was like my mother giving me a horoscope that says you're in a learning process right now so whatever this uh, uh, lawyer had told me it snapped me, slapped me in the face and said you know you're just in a learning phase right now you need to experience the experience and it's not like I had any answers at the time I didn't know what I know now but it was almost like uh, just live it out and one day you'll find all of the answers and when you find all the answers you're supposed to do something with it which is right in this book <laughs> um, personally what I feel is it needs to have a documentary and it does need to have a water bottle concept which is um, the guy that's helping me with uh, this book is also working on this water concept I will get into that in another chapter I've mentioned it on my YouTube channel many many times but you do need to have an influence in your life instead of having this negative influences you have to have that positive influence in your life um, it is what keeps me on my path all the time um, I knew that at once I knew what I needed to do the first thing was I needed to improve my communication skills so that what I say actually can make some sense so I'm hoping that this makes some logic sense to some people because I've been working at it for a year <laughs> and I'm trying to condense it down to the size of a book but that is where I feel my purpose is is to I've learned all of this so that I can share it and every single one of us has had a life experience that has meaning, that has a purpose. Um, in my next chapter, um, I will show you how to find yourself, how to have a conversation with God, conversation with evil, how to know the difference, how to know what it is you're supposed to do next. Because you know what, if we all just participated and jumped in the change right now, we can make global change and these people would not have any power God will show up when we show up because God's inside each and every one of us right now you have to trust each and every one of us are filled with Satan if you want to believe you are a sinner then you know if that's the way you want to go about it I'm a sinner there's nothing I can do about it yes you are you're full of evil <laughs> and you're playing the game of evil but evil is just a lack of information you just don't know how to connect with God yet you're connecting with the Bible you're worshiping a Bible you're worshiping somebody else's book don't even worship my book you need to start worshiping yourself and listen to your own book listen to your own life your own life experience was your lesson and you're just in school right now it's time to graduate that's what this whole global experience, this collapse of everything, the destruction of all the whole entire world, it's just our lesson that we need to learn and learn damn quick. And, and it's not it's not like you have to go to school. It's you gotta graduate now. It, it there is no more time for learning. This is a very, very, very fast process. But whatever you find one purpose is it's going to change this is my purpose right now everything my whole entire life has come down to this moment now to share all of my experiences but once that's done I'm gonna have another purpose and I don't know what that purpose is but that's where I'm always going to be listening to my guides myself my full potential self and I have to accept the fact that things change and once this purpose is over I will have another purpose but I don't know what it is right now the whole matrix needs to change for me to see what that new purpose is so that's every one of us has to participate in the change you all have a purpose in this and once that's done 
you'll be enjoying your life and you'll have another purpose then. Peace out. <laughs>